archaeological sites were, that's just full of remains of cattle that were being sacrificed. And then you find the Assyria, Syrian or whatever, however they pronounce it, it's, it has mummified cattle within these tombs and they're, they're covered and sealed in there and they're literally worshipped. I mean, so it's a very interesting story. At least that's what I've found. I've, a lot of people don't mention the fact that there's cattle inside of those big, you know, stone structures, but that's what's inside of them. I've already known. I found out. Okay, so now I'm going to get over the areas and the ideas of Thoth and everything so and go into the ancient Egyptian concept of the soul. Okay, um, the ancient Egyptians believed that a human soul was made up of five parts: the Rin, the Ba, the Ka, the Sheut, S H E U T, and the Ib. <clears throat> In addition to these components of the soul, there was the human body, called the Ha, occasionally a plural Ha. In other words, called the ha, H-A, and then occasionally a plural ha, which is H-A-W, meaning approximately some of bodily parts. The other souls were Aku, A-A-K-H-U, Kabut, K-H-A-I-B-U, and Kat, K-H-A-T. Now the Ib, the I-B, Ib, that's the heart. Okay, it's an important part of the Egyptian soul. No, an important part of the Egyptian soul was thought to be the Ib, or the the Jib, which is JB, IB, JB, or heart. The Ib, or metaphysical heart, was believed to be formed from one drop of blood from the child's mother's heart, taken at conception. To ancient Egyptians, the heart was the seat of emotion, thought, will, and intention. This is evidenced by the many impressions in the Egyptian language which incorporate the word ib, I-B, and then ot-ib, A-W-T slash I-B, which is happiness, literally wideness of heart, and then zak ib Cap, capital X A X slash I B, which is estranged, literally trunk trunca truncated. Uh, okay, literally truncated of heart. This word was transcribed by Wallace Bulge as ab, capital A and then B. In Egyptian religion, the heart was the key to the afterlife. It was conceived as surviving death in the netherworld, where it gave evidence for or against its possessor. It was thought that the heart was examined by Anubis and the deities during the weighing of the heart ceremony. If the heart weighed more than the feather of Ma'at, it was immediately consumed by the monster Amit. And Amit is spelled A-M-M-I-T. And Ma'at is spelled M-A-A-T. Okay. Then you have the shoot, which is the S-H-E-U-T. And that's the shadow. A person's shadow or silhouette. Shoot. S-W-T in Egyptian is always present because of this Egyptians surmise that the shadow contains something of the person it represents. Through this association statues of people and deities were sometimes referred to as shadows. The shadow was also represented to Egyptians of a figure of death or servant of Anubis and was depicted graphically as a small human figure painted completely black. Okay, then you had the wren. 
your Ren, which is R-E-N, is your name. As a part of the soul, a person's Ren, R-E-N, or R-N, which is your name, was given to them at birth, and the Egyptians believed that it would live for as long as that name was spoken, which explains why e efforts were made to protect it and the practice of placing it in numerous writings. For example, part of the Book of Breathing, a derivative of the Book of the Dead, was a means to ensure the survival of the name. The cartouche, magical rope, often was used to surround the name and protect it. Conversely, the name of deceased enemies of the state, such as Akhenaten, were hacked out of the monuments in a form of Dematio dem Memori. Sometimes, however, they were removed in order to make room for the economical insertion of the name of a successor without having to build another monument. The greater the number of places a name was used, the greater the possibility it would survive to be read and spoken. And then you had the Ba, which is B-A. The Ba was everything that makes an individual unique, similar to the notion of personality. In this sense, inanimate objects could also have a Ba, a unique character, and indeed, Old Kingdom, Old Kingdom pyramids often were called the Ba in their owner. The Ba is an aspect of a person that the Egyptians believed would live after the body died, and it is also depicted as a human-headed bird flying out of the tomb to join with the Ka in the afterlife. In the coffin text, one form of the Ba that comes into existence after death is corporeal eating, drinking, and copulating. Louis Zabkar argued that the Ba is not part of the person, but is the person himself, unlike the soul in Greek or late Judaic Christian or Muslim thought. The idea of a purely Im immaterial existence was so foreign to Egyptians that when Christianity spread to Egypt, they borrowed the Greek word psych to describe the concept of soul and not the term Ba, Zabkar concludes that so per particular was the concept of Ba to ancient Egyptians thought that it ought not to be translated but instead the concept be footnoted or parenthetically explained as one of the modes of existence for a person. In another mode of existence, the Ba of the deceased is depicted in the book of going forth by day, returning to the mummy and participating in life outside the tomb in non-corporeal form, echoing the solar theology of Ray. R.E. or Ra, uniting with Osiris at each night. The word Ba, as in B-A-U, plural for the word Ba, B-A, meant something similar to impressiveness, power, and reputation, particularly of a deity when a deity intervened in human affairs it was said that the ba, ba or ba or bau of the deity were at were at work um in this regard the ruler was regarded as a ba of a deity or one deity who believed to be the ba of another Okay, then you have Ka, K-A, 
the Ka was the Egyptian concept of vital essence, that which distinguishes the difference between the living and a dead person, with death occurring when the Ka left the body. The Egyptians believed the Kanam, which is K-H-N-U-M, created the bodies of the children on a potter's wheel and inserted them into their mother's bodies, depending on the region. Egyptians believed that Heket, H-E-K-E-T, or Meshhenet, Meshhenet, M E S K H E N E T was the creator of each person's ka, breathing it into them at the instant of their birth as the part of their soul that made them be alive. This resembles the concept of spirit in other religions. In Judaic beliefs and Christianity beliefs in the book of Genesis it mentions God creating humans and giving them life with his breath the breath of God so that also kind of goes into the whole concept right there now we have the Ak the A-K-H the Ak was a concept of the dead that varied over the long history of ancient Egyptian belief. It was associated with thought, but not as an action of the mind. Rather, it was intellect as a living entity. The Ak also played a role in the afterlife. Following the death of the Khat, the physical body, and the Khat is spelled K-H-A-T, the Ba and Ka were reunited to reanimate the Ak, the AKH. The reanimation of the Ak was also possible if the proper funeral rites were executed and followed by constant offerings. The ritual was termed Se Ak, S E slash AKH, to make a dead person into a into an living Ak. In this sense, it even developed into a sort of ghost or roaming dead being when the tomb was not in order anymore. During the Ramicide period, an Ankh could do either harm or good to persons who still living depending on the circumstances causing nightmares feelings of guilt sickness etc it could be evoked by prayers or written letters left in the tombs offering chapel also in order to help living family members by intervening in di disputes by making an appeal to other dead persons or deities with any authority to influence things on earth for the better, but also to inflict punishment. The separation of Ak and the unification of Ka and Ba were both brought, were both about no, were brought about after death by having a proper offering made and knowing the proper efficacious spell. But there was an attendant risk of dying again. Egyptian funerary literature, such as the coffin text and the Book of the Dead, were intended to aid the deceased in not dying a second time in becoming an Ak, aka H. Ancient Egyptians believe that death occurs when a person's ka leaves. The <laughs>